there may be a reassessment in the Kremlin, given what Western weapons have done on the battlefield for the Ukrainians and the fact that maybe Putin was told by his own military leaders, yes, we can do this in a matter of months. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I'm really pleased we're, we're talking about this, because this issue in the UK and I think elsewhere, people get a bit fatigued after a while talking about the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And we need to remember this has been going on for, what, nine, ten months now. We're going to be coming up to a year. And it, only if this issue is continually discussed and in the public eye are our politicians in the UK and in America going to continue to provide that support that's so vital, because without it, this may well have been over a long time ago. Yeah. And, and is, is that part of this process that perhaps the back channels behind the scenes, we've got Biden, uh, we've got Schultz in, <coughs> in Germany saying, you've got to start thinking at some stage how to bring this to an end, because clearly the appetite is still there as far as the UK is concerned in terms of, of mm -hmm. providing the hardware, but that not, might not be the case in, in terms of Germany, for instance. Uh, yeah, and I think that's doubly so for uh, the US, uh, the, the, the public. The uh, Republicans particularly. Yeah. Yes, uh, they're getting tired of funneling uh, billions and millions of dollars into Ukraine. That They uh, take the stance that they're tired of being drawn into wars in Europe and they go right back to the Second World War uh, to say that, look, this is nothing. We shouldn't be uh, supporting it. I think that uh, I would group in, I always have groups in NATO and the US as, as, as one being, they, they have been uh, sort of very proactive in those in the, in the months before the war. Uh, one of the main pretexts uh, for the invasion was NATO's uh, failure what? to guarantee that Ukraine wouldn't join the alliance. Yeah, 